Hello, everybody. This is episode nine of Double Cross Anime Podcast. My name is Wooper, and I'm joined, as always, by... Mario. Nice to meet you. Yes. Thank you for being <laughs> here. What are we going to talk about today? All right. So we, we're going to run down the nice shows of the new seasons. The uh, We're doing the preview, basically. Yep. And uh, we, we actually haven't done that like before. So this is like something new for, for us as well. Right, very first time. Even though this is only episode 9, we've taken a few weeks off. So the first episode was probably around the start of the winter 2018 season. Mm-hmm. But this time we're actually going to start with the first episodes of a bunch of spring series. Yep. Except for one, Hisone to Masotan, the bone show. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't been fan-subbed as of this recording, so we're not going to be able to talk about that one, and we won't be able to include it in our rankings. But, uh, you know, if we if we watch it and we both like it, we might start covering it going forward. We'll see. Yep, that's right. All right, so... What are we starting with? Yeah, so we, we're going to start them with uh, with the alphabetical orders, just, just to make okay. it more fun. <laughs> so, okay. the first show we're going to talk about is Darling in the Franks. The uh, right. episode thirteen, yeah. So that All aired right. six days ago. Um, yeah, but it's it kind of works. I think it's like right in the middle. Darling in the Franks is probably like a twenty-five, twenty-six episode show. So episode thirteen in the middle there, it works as a good uh, jumping-off point for the second core, and it's also very different from everything that we've seen before. It it is. How, how, how do you lie that's uh, the last episode of Darling in the Franks, Rupert? You know, a lot of people were describing it when it first aired as, um, like, I don't know, kind of revolutionary. Not for anime as a whole, but for the show. Like, it was so different, and it's totally changed the game, because now we know about the backstory, and we know that Hero and Zero Two had met before, and, oh, this changes everything. I didn't really feel that way as I was watching it. All right. Um, How do you feel? I wasn't. I wasn't too big on it. Mm. Honestly. All right. How about you? Well, I I like it enough. I I I I do feel now that I, now I have the reason to care for both of them, uh, Hero and Zero Two. Right. I I I like the fact that uh that episode wasn't a fan service episode, so there there was a, there wasn't any fan service scenes at all. And I I, I I like the pre- presentation. I like the idea behind that. I just feel out that this episode is gonna be like one of the episodes in uh, Little Witch Acad- Academia, which is uh, they they have like some very solid episodes, and the next one will be like they 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 going back to fan service and to the like fluffy stuff again. So that's what right. I'm afraid. Yeah, I can easily see that happening because the show has been so, so fluffy, mm-hmm. and so I don't know. Like there have been a bunch of episodes that seem pretty insignificant, and there a lot of them are dedicated to one character in particular. So mm-hmm. they it's not as though they mean nothing, right? They're they're fleshing out this this group of kids, um, all the parasites who are doomed to die if you if you listen to Zero Two's side of the story. Yep, but they they. I think this is something we talked about last time. The way that every episode is resolved mm-hmm. um, very, very quickly and very neatly at the end, usually via voiceover, yep. and like the sun rises on a new day. Literally, you see the sun rising. Yes, that's um, right. <laughs> it's yeah, I, I can see it doing the same thing that Little Witch did. They're both trigger shows, so maybe Trigger has a, a formula that they're sticking to. Well, I, I, I ne- now you. I admit that I never, I, I never enjoyed the writing of trigger shows, original shows, so so to speak. I I I don't I I just don't like the way that they write many of the um, episodes, many of their characters. Like their characters is always like you know like heavy, uh, trope. They they just you know like they they they're the kind of characters that we we all seen before. Yeah, and like Akko is. The Genki girl, she's mm-hmm. really energetic, and uh, Lotte. Yeah. The what's her name? She's like the bookworm, and even in Kill the Kill, that was that was true. But I actually, yeah, I I know what you mean. Their their characters are pretty tropey. Anime's like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so it's 
And another thing <coughs> that anime is like is uh, it's very fan service heavy. Not maybe not in the way that Frank's is, but yep. in in anime, even if there's not like you know boobs and butts on staring you in the face, panty shot. There's there's still yeah. Even if that's not going on, there's still some type of fan service. Like the the show is sh- anime will play to its audience very clearly. That's right. And that's that's something that's gonna that's gonna be like a trend I think as we go through these these spring shows. Oh, that happens a lot. <laughs> so I can't like I can't criticize it too too much for for being fan servicey, mm-hmm. but the the composition of the show like the fact that we're at the halfway point and this bombshell is is being dropped mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like a bombshell that's that's my problem all right um i come come into this episode i i actually really like the voiceover that uh i i thought wasn't what re- wasn't good before but the voiceover for the two characters as they narrate their the past the memories whatever was pretty good. I I think that that was pretty like one of my favorite, like you know like factor in 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 that episodes. And okay. I actually like Hero as a kid more than more than what we see him now. Yeah. So he's, when he's a kid, it, like his bravery stands out a little bit more. That's that's and right. His, his leadership because he, you don't expect the kid to have those personality traits. And then he he question he 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 question everything. It's it's like now he just become like a, a cry baby, a whatever. Yeah, so, I I know I know what you mean. Um, but I think that has to do with the fact that his memory was erased. Yeah. So so now we now we know the reason why. So we can see we can see that it makes sense. It make a bit of sense. Kind of. Kind of. Like when in episode 12 when when uh, Zero Two said, you know, you're, I'm just using you, you're just a tool and I I just want to reunite with my real darling. Yep. I th- I thought for sure that Hero was a like clone. some sort of experiment. Yeah, 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 a clone or like a, a he was born from a petri dish using the re- the real hero's DNA yeah. or something. But it turns out that his memory was just erased. But um it I I don't know. It 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 that just me who didn't catch on, or is it that um they they try to erase the memories of Bob Hero and Zero Two, right? So how come I it just guess so. how come just Hero who doesn't remember anything and Zero Two who actually remember everything? Well, we didn't actually see anybody's memory get erased, did we? Uh, What's the last thing we see in the flashbacks? Do you remember? Yeah, we we saw them in the lab and we saw. We said something about like um, I I remember Doctor Frank said something about like erasing the memories, but I'm not pretty sure on that. Okay, I didn't. I don't really remember that, but I I saw this episode when it came out last Saturday, oh. so that was six days ago. My memory of it is a little fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, I and wa- the show doesn't really <laughs> stick in my memory to begin with. Well, I watched it yesterday. I I still don't remember much. <laughs> That's kind of damning. Yeah, uh, no. like that's a. It's not good. It's not a good look for the show. Well, and the episode was the is the one that we have a lot to talk about, and I still don't remember much of the details. Well, the it's we know that Hero's memory was erased, but I mean, I guess they didn't erase Zero Two's because she was already totally under their control. Uh, oh, because she's just a monster, so they, so, eventually, like her her. Her memories will get back somehow. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, heroes heroes memories came back when she, when her spectral form, started strangling him. Yeah, right. <laughs> so maybe maybe somebody else's spectral form strangled her, and her memories came rushing back, and she realized, oh, I have to kill, uh, Klaxosaurus to become human. Mm, yep. I I don't know, but um. But I I I do feel that's like after this episode, the um dynamic between Hero and Zero Two gonna gonna be changed, so it's gonna be better. I hope that the personality of Hero will be better from now on. And but I I I still afraid that you know like we will stick with some like insignificant episodes like before coming coming to the the final acts. Yeah, I if I had to guess, I'd say you're you're probably bang on about that um 
I I didn't think this episode was bad or anything. I just don't agree with the, the reaction to it. Like, well, I, I still oh, oh my god, it's the best episode ever. Well, 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 I I, I think it's it's the best episode of that league so far. So yes, but I, I'm I'm not I'm not that overhyped to say that it's like the best ever that I watch. Okay, well, if you think it's the best so far, then that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Well. So where would you where would you rank it out of the nine the nine shows? Where do you have it? Oh, we 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 do in the ranking now as well. Or do you want to do the ranking like in the end? I think it might be interesting to to list the individual ranks for the right. shows as we go to like build suspense for. Right. So um, you know, I have my ranking as eight out of nine. Oh wow! So eighth, as in like second to last, almost last place. Second, second to last. It it mostly due to uh the fact that I, I just don't don't, I just don't feel like, talking about the shows anymore. Okay. Like. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, like like I um, I, I have that, uh, darling in the Frank is the ent- entertainment show. Like I I always entertain to watch it, but I don't have like any deep feeling, deep thinking about that. I don't have right. much to, to talk about that. Yeah, that's okay, one other well, factor I put that in the eight of night. Okay, this may surprise you then because I don't. I am not entertained by Darling in the Franks, and I didn't really like this episode. And I actually put it sixth out of nine. All right. <laughs> so there are gonna be some spring series that I really do not like. All right. Uh, but we'll get to those. We will get to those. What's next on the list, Mario? All right, the next one will be Golden Camus. Oh boy! <laughs> Tell me about uh, that. I, I already, I already know about your feelings, at least a little bit about the show. You said that, despite you know the well the CGI, the CGI animal that will not be named, <laughs> you still, you still really enjoyed the. I, the premiere. You thought it had a strong first episode. All right, I, I, I tell you what I think about about Golden Camus now. I think it's have if uh doing the west the western uh turn better than any western any movie from western culture, so it, it's wait really yeah I I do think so and I I think that um they 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 set like a very uh, clear goal for the two uh, characters. They have um they have like two of the. Of the more exciting character that I do, I I want, I want to know more about. They have the good chemistry together. Uh, the bear, the the CGI bear looks like fantastic, fantastic, and it like what? It it it, it looked amazing. And it looked amazing. And <laughs> hold on, what? hold on. And the stories, the the story so far, I like, set up nicely. So I I want to follow that in the end. And and one of those things I just said w- wasn't true. So one you, of those things you said wasn't true. Yeah. So so you so I I pretty much like on board on what on, on what the show show is telling so far. How about okay, you? Okay. So I'm hoping that the thing that you you said I'm hoping that the lie that you told right there was <laughs> this this is doing a Western theme better than any Western film. No. I hope that was the lie <laughs> and the CG bear was the truth. It it's it CG bear was a lie. Well, I mean, yeah, but nah, nah. So it's... okay, so not a, not a fan of westerns then. Really, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm. That was a that was a question to you. So right. you're not a fan of westerns. I can, well, I appreciate like the like the best west western. I'm not I'm not pretty much a fan. No, I I don't think so. No. Okay, I don't know anything. I mean, I I know about John Wayne. All right. Uh, I so and I know about like the concept of a spaghetti western, and I know a lot of the tropes, all right, of the genre. But I I don't know a lot about westerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I do know is that I did not like this episode. All right, tell of Golden Kamui. All right, tell me about it. Tell me more about it. So, so you said you said that it sets a very clear goal for its characters. Yep. And that's that's completely true. Mm-hmm. But the the thing about this episode is that pretty much everything it did was in service of a goal. Yep. Like, when it when it opens with the, with the old man, talking to mm-hmm. what's his face, uh, you know Scarface. What is his um, name? Sugimoto. Sugimoto. Yeah. yeah. When it, when the old man is talking to Sugimoto, he's like the old man is 
only there. He's only written into the show to to explain the premise. Yeah, that's. And then he and, and then he dies. Yes. And they take his skin off because you know that's that's how the show goes. They're gonna find all these guys and mm-hmm. assemble their <laughs> their the flesh skids. in order in order to get a map to the treasure. Man, that that's how so, that's how awesome to me. I, I know. Well, I mean, the premise is, is pretty cool, but the thing is, it's it's so mechanically written. Like, the old guy is just there to explain the entire story about the, the man in the jail who, who tattooed the maps, and then that guy dies. And then the girl shows up, and they fight a bear for a little bit. And all, all the dialogue is like, oh, we have to fight this bear now, because the bear, you know, she, she won't let go of her prey when she's when she's uh, had a bite, or when she's smelled it, or once we're in her territory, so we have to fight this bear. Oh, now we have to work to fight this bear. Uh, okay. Oh, so you you're the daughter of one of the guys who was killed when the gold was tr- being transported. Oh well, I guess we have to partner up. Like, all right. The the main character is a is a murdering, like ruthless dude who cuts people's skin off with no hesitation and no remorse. So this episode should have been about getting us to really appreciate his character and like him as an individual but i didn't get that at all it was just so plot heavy and not even plot it was just this this is what the story will be about well all right and i and i hate i hated that all right i have i have two points cut to you from okay. that first um i i west uh western turn as a turn as a whole it's, it's, it's about plot it's it's not about like character it's not about you know like any um any diff a- anything diff it's, it's just about plot it's just about like a, a guy who looking for gold and he have to come over over, over obstacle he have to kill other people to get to the goal I think it's it's the main the main theme of western and this like uh, this one do that this one do that pretty well this one have like a very uh, clear goal and premise and I, 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 I do agree with what you said but it, it's more it's more about like you know what what the children have to offer us and so, so that like so far I'm, I'm pretty much like you know like enjoy enjoy the premise secondly right. uh, about the characters about the, the, the main guy Sugimoto you said like you you, you did you, you don't have any reason to care about him yeah, because he's a killer and he's like he's crazy. Oh well, when when you said like you you cut uh he he cut uh people's skin off, it it was because that the guy was dead before. It was that be, the guy who killed by the bear before by the Chichi bear. I know. Bears. So I know uh, the guy. <laughs> the Chichi guy bear. <laughs> so, so you know like uh, I know the guy was dead, mm-hmm. but. Mm. Even even if it's a corpse that you're skinning, uh, that is that is still really like freaky and messed up. Uh, Can you imagine doing that to somebody who's dead with like no hesitation, just very calmly, and then hol- holding the skin up and being like, okay, now let's team up and find a whole bunch of other people and use their skin. Yeah, I, I think it's more it's, it's more about like they setting the tone. Set uh, it's it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be cruel series. Uh, I'm. And basically, uh, basically, it's just like it's a matter of taste, and I, I, I like it. <laughs> I have well, I have no warmth have... about about it. Okay, you you say that it's going to be cruel. I mean, I I agree. It's it's like it's set in the wilderness. There are bears that they have to defend themselves from, and the the girl Asirpa, she's she's using like poison arrows, and she she lives a very, you know, a very dangerous life, mm-hmm. and she. She is she is not afraid of you know what's going on. She's mm-hmm. accustomed to being in the wilderness and all that stuff. So I can understand how how she and Sugimoto would would partner up and would go and do this thing. But I mm-hmm. I don't I mean I kind of like her because I think her character design specifically mm-hmm. her outfit yep. is very cool. It's mm-hmm. just uh, it's interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. So every shot with her in it is I'm like okay yeah I want to know more. But Sugimoto is. I just I'm not interested in him, and I don't think that it's true that West. I mean, despite not being very familiar, overly familiar with westerns, I don't think it's true that they're all about plot. 
what I do what I do think is true is that many Western plots are the same. All right. Uh, like a new a new guy comes into town, and he gets involved in whatever conflict is going on there, and then yeah, he he kills the guy, and there's usually a woman. Uh, but it it is about like the archetype, the the character archetype, and and watching him you know, achieve redemption or achieve success yep. or whatever. And I, I, I don't want to see Sugimoto achieve redemption or success. All right. I don't care that he's broke. I don't care about him. And I think the show also looks pretty boring. So that, that turns me off. All right. Um, yeah, that that's one other thing that I, I will disagree with you because I don't think that Tsuji, Sugimoto is an archetype character for... Uh, he 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 doesn't he doesn't dare to be cool. So so he doesn't act like pretty cool all the times. Well, um, uh, I mean he he is smiling when he gets up when he gets out from underneath, you know, like yeah. a bear that probably weighs a quarter of a ton. Yeah. He's so he's he's <laughs> even if he's not trying to act cool, the show is making him out to be like a real cool badass. Well, uh, I I I don't I don't get that feeling a lot. Coming okay. from the episodes, and 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 they they actually like like hint some of his uh backstory about like why he want to he want to to have that that much money, and and I'm pretty selling on that as well. <laughs> the he wants the money so that he can um, pay for the woman to go to America, right? Uh, is that yeah yeah that's right yes. <laughs> his 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 uh, childhood friend who he was in the war with wife yeah his wife. Yeah, she's losing her vision. Yeah, but the but the thing is, like that is that is glossed over very quickly, mm -hmm. yeah. and much more time is spent on expository dialogue between him and Asirpa about how they fight the bear and how they're going to partner up. Yeah, it's like more more time is spent on that and less time is spent on him, the individual. And I don't, I really don't like shows that that dig into their their story and like rush to set it all up so quickly. I think this one did that. All right. Um. Let, there's one more thing I want to talk about the Western throne. So, uh, it's it's like like I said, it's more of a plot. And the main theme I think for for on the Western they want to do is like the moral. So they they want to, it's like they want to really underline the like the the moral of the heroes. Be it like, you know, if if he do the right things. If he if, if it's alright for him to kill people, and all that stuff, so I hope hopefully like uh this show going to address that as well, because so far we don't see that. You hope that it does address that. I think I I hope it does address that. Yes. Huh. Hmm. Okay. I I wouldn't want it to get into like more morality. Uh, I wouldn't want it to moralize. I I would I would want I just want Sugimoto to be like an anti-hero. Yep. Not just. All right. Bl not just bland. Hmm. All right. Let's I I I feel as though he's he's bland, but I like you know, um maybe maybe in the John Wayne era, it hmm. was it was more about the the hero being, uh having like stronger moral fiber than everybody else, mm -hmm. and you know standing standing up to the lawless gang in the in the town that he comes to. But if you move forward in history a little bit, and you come to like what Clint Eastwood is doing in a more modern era, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that. Sometimes there are there are anti heroes in those sorts of stories where it's okay for the the main guy not to be like a super upstanding citizen. That that's yep. what I want to see Sugimoto be. But I I want to see him, you know, struggle a little bit with what the things that he has to do with with what's going on, uh, with right. with the cruel life that he that he's forced to live. All right. So, so where did you where did you rank so Golden the, Kamoi? The bottom line. Yes, I I ranked this so at first. So how about you? Oh my you? gosh! Okay. Yes. How about you? Eighth. Eight. <laughs> wait, wait. I, is that? Let me see if that's right. It's gonna Hold be on. interesting. No, no. It's it's seventh. Seven. All right. It's it's seven. It's gonna be interesting to see like what is our final four gonna be. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it like one at a time because it it kind of makes it kind of makes the ground that we're standing on like uneven, like unsteady as we go through. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the next show then. Oh, you you, <laughs> no, let's do it. you you want to talk? You want to to say something about the bears, or we can leave it for? <laughs> well, we'll just leave it. Everyone who's seen the show knows no, that the CGI the bear 
are goofy. Uh, I actually did not mind the wolf or the fire. I thought those were acceptable. Yeah. Um, but the the bear was silly. Well, uh, I, I just want to say one thing about the bears. Like, uh, okay. Apparently, it's it it's the director intention to make the bear look, you know, like on the world, on the I I saw that. I saw that yeah. post that he that he made. That's that's just a bunch of baloney. Yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense because uh I I think the bears in this show is supposed to be like a force of nature. So so the last thing you want to do is to make it, you know, like unrealistic or the world lead. Yeah, you w- exactly. If if it's supposed to be a force of force of nature, you would want it to look natural. That's right. Not not alien. So uh so I I, I just it, it, it just Completely, you know, like the have no merits. The the CGI bears, yeah, and it it look ugly. I I, I mean, like compared, to, it it look out of place compared to the rest right. of the shows. Yeah, I all agree. right. Let's just move on to the next shows. All right, let's do it. So in alphabetical, the next show would be Hinamatsuri. Okay. Uh, how did you feel about this episode? Well, I actually after watching this episodes, I I I look over the manga, uh, for first two chapters, three chapters of the mangas, and I actually find that the, uh, some of the events they switch up, so they they move around. Yeah, that fight lot. scene in the so, anime. Yeah, the the fight scene and and um, when whenever like the the uh, the girl Hina. Uh, he he she want to uh she want to go to school and she want to you know help 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 her friend, that that all you know like, out of orders, it's it's not in the same orders of of the the anime that we saw. Having said right. that, I I think the ad anime the the does a good job, to you know like establish the uh relationship between the two men, and for me it it's it's it it hilarious. It's not like it's not the kind of you know like uh, really you know make make you laugh out out loud, but you still enjoy you know like every moment of it. I I got a right. chuckle out of it like just many moments, so I like it. I yeah. really like it. How about you? I also I also really liked it. Um, I I did not. I haven't read the manga. I it's you read the first three chapters. I know Aiden uh, follows the manga mm-hmm. pretty pretty closely. Yeah. Um. And I, I even I could tell without knowing anything about the the show that the fight scene was totally out of place, um, you know, in, in terms of whatever what little story there is to the series, but it looked so good. Mm-hmm. I am I am totally you know how a lot of a lot of anime will try to hook you with like, um, an action scene at the start or yep, like yep. a fan service scene or. An ext- a, a scene of extreme violence, or they'll just throw something in yep. at the start, or somewhere in the first episode to hook you. I am yep. totally in favor of like really well animated, cool looking fights oh. being the thing that anime start doing in order to in order to hook people because it just it just looks so beautiful. Like regardless of the fact that there are characters who I didn't know <laughs> fighting on screen for a reason that I didn't understand, it just looks so nice. And and shouting all the nonsense stuff. Yes. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> I, I, see, I see what you mean. Yes. Oh, Watashi no smartphone. <laughs> that's what the guy says when the redheaded girl kicks the phone. Yep. Out of his hands. It's just. It's just. That's just funny to me. I mean, humor is subjective, but I I laughed when that happened. Yeah. Well, uh, it. So I like the fight scene. What I what I like the most uh, about the show, though, is the relationship between uh, Nita, Hina, and Nita. Yep. I thought it. it I, I mean, it it moved a little too fast for me, mm-hmm. but I understand that with only twelve episodes, that sometimes happens. Well, actually, in the manga, it's it started that this way as well. So yes. I mean. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure it started the same way, or or similarly at least. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I'm. I mean, if I had been in charge of the episode, which I'm not, I probably would have taken the fight scene out and used whatever time was there, to just you know just a minute or a minute and thirty seconds. Yeah. Pad out um the like the getting to know you phase between the two yeah. main characters. Well, I I, I I think it's pretty much ahead. like the show's attentions to to get Hina just appear like out of the blue really like out of yep. the blue and you know like it, it make it, it make you kind of like unexpected 
like like you 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 don't expect that to happen, you know. So I I think it's it's like it's kind of in the show intention to do that. Right. Oh, she her her appearance is definitely. I mean, speaking of things that are otherworldly, she may be from another world. Yeah, sure. I don't. We don't know. Who, maybe you do, since you've mm. read the manga a little bit. No, I don't. But I don't. Yeah, we don't know what she is or where she's from. Um, and it, I so her appearing out of the blue. That's good. That's funny because mm. she appears in that little egg. You know. Yep. <laughs> um, and. But but like once she arrived, she was threatening Nita with her with her abilities, like making all of his all of his plates and his vases and stuff that he collects yep. hover in midair. Mm -hmm. So that that establishes her as much more powerful, um, and much more of like a dubious moral figure than he is, even though he's a yakuza. Yep. So I would have I would have liked them to come closer together a little more slowly because she does threaten him and manipulate him mm -hmm. a lot at the start. Yep. Uh, so that that's my only complaint about the episode. Mm -hmm. But even even with that being said, I, I still really love their dynamic. Like at the end when she throws all the people out of the building, yep. uh, it feels really great because she does that because Nita has been so so kind and so, you know... Supportive. Uh, supportive. Ex yeah, exactly. Supportive of her. So it, it, it's a good moment. It makes you feel good and it makes you laugh. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of unexpected for me as well when, when the show is... is uh, it's light, it's funny, but when it gets to like the emotional core, it actually pre uh, get me a lot. So I actually really love these episodes. You know, like I, I yeah, me too. I agree that I, I I love the dynamic between the two, and when in it when it hits, it actually it really hit you. It's yeah. a it's a good show overall for me. And have have yeah. you watched the second episodes? I just watched it, uh, literally like not. two hours ago be good okay i think it's better than I the have... first one. Oh wow then we're in for a treat mm -hmm. it's, i mean it sounds like we're going to be covering this one because we both like it yeah yeah i yep you want to reveal your ranking all right so my ranking that should be third out of eight oh, i put it oh, out of nine right yeah oh out of nine yes sorry yep yeah i put it second second yeah so and w with an average score of second and a half place mm -hmm. it's definitely getting covered there's it's a, it's not even possible for it to be that's right knocked out. Mm -hmm. So that's good. All oh. right, what's next? All right, the next one will be Lupai the third pack five. Lupin the third. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever seen any Lupin stuff before? Nah, I haven't. Okay, so it's first interesting that this would be your first exposure. Yeah. To Lupin because it's it's such a like as a franchise it has such a storied history. So, uh, but it's not a, it's not as though there's a lot of continuity that you're missing out on. Yeah, tell 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 me more about like what you have watched out of the franchise, and what um, do you think in general about the franchise as a whole? Well, I'm I'm not a big loop on aficionado. Like mm -hmm. I haven't seen everything. You know, mm -hmm. it's what's especially lacking from my knowledge is the the original TV series, which was actually worked on by Miyazaki. Oh, um, but. I have seen part four, which is the 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 one from last year or two years ago, or maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. I want to say two. Um, it has the exact same art style and the same jacket. Like oh. in all the different TV in all the different TV series, Lupin wears a different colored jacket. Yep, yep. But he's stuck with the blue one here for part five, which he also had in part four. So there's some amount of continuity between them, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've also seen a couple movies. Um, the uh, 1979 so, ones from uh, yes. Miyazaki, yep. The Castle of Cagliostro, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was actually a shout-out to that movie in this in this episode. Oh, oh. When he, when he says to the, the red-haired girl who's in the, uh, like, the girl who designed the, the yep. deep web system or, or whatever, uh -huh. when he says to her, I'm, I'm particularly good at rescuing, uh, like, such specific types of women i can't i can't remember his exact words mm -hmm. i'm really good at at rescuing like uh do you remember what he said yeah yeah <laughs> no i know but i i i know i know what you said yeah i know what you mean okay yeah that was a shout out to cagliostro because in that movie he there's a girl who is also like locked away mm -hmm. and uh he he rescues her all right kind of there's a there's a twist on it yep um 
So I like that there was a Cagliostro shout out, and uh, I like this episode mostly. It was a little goofy, but Lupin is always goofy. Yeah, that's right. How did you feel about like the the episode overall and well uh, and the goofiness level? Well, it 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 I just the show based on uh, action series. It do a very good job at an action because I everything flowed, you know, like really quickly. Fast. The car and, chase. Yeah, the car chase. And, and, and everything makes you exciting. So like, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I, I feel pretty excited watching all, all those things move. And what else? Uh, all the characters, like, so they have like uh, the four core members of Lu- right. Lupai, the two guys, and... Fujiko. Yeah, and Fujiko. Oh, that's right. I've also seen the, the Mario Kata pan show. Fujiko, oh, yeah. the woman with no name, yeah. from like 2012. 2012. Yep. And all, all the other characters are, are fun to watch, and I think the uh, the up, updated, um, I, I'm no man to say that, but I think the up, up updated like details for this uh for the for this series in particular in the uh, social network and the uh, thing. Right. And I I think it's it done pretty well, so like it it. It serves like as the main point, the main plot point for for this, for this cat chase, whatever it is. So uh, yeah, I I I really enjoy like the the whole thing that I'm I'm seeing so far. Yeah, the there's a there's a definite like modernization of the of the franchise. Yep. With part five, with the with Lupin being like a super hacker, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the all the talk <laughs> about the you know the the deep web and sites online where you can buy drugs and the idea that you can just steal all the money out of these people's bank accounts and the the spot the Lupin game uh, that all that is I, I'm a little wary about it because part yeah. four had an overarching story that was a little a little weird like a little strange yeah uh, and this one kind of smells the same to me oh right. I I like Lupin best when it's just being a bunch of standalone heist yep. type stories. All right, but I, I have you know I'm I'm sure that we'll get plenty of those as the as the season goes along. Mm-hmm. The thing that I'm most interested about that was in this first episode was like the league of villains. The all the bad yeah. guys who you see as the money's being taken from their account. Mm-hmm. You see them chatting online. Well, yep. Yeah. Um, they're they all their designs are all pretty pretty interesting. And the idea that Lupin is going to have to face like, them, yeah, fight against he, he, them, or or that they're going to oppose him in some way—that's interesting to me. Yeah, he literally had to fight them in the next episodes. So I I I have watched the second episodes, and it it was yep, it was him fighting all the lich of villains. All all of them? Yeah, mostly all of them. Yes. Oh man, I I thought they were going to be like recurring characters. <laughs> so. But does he does he just blow all of them out in episode two? Yeah, and let, then that's it. They're let, they're never to be seen again. No, no. Let it let it watch it. You know, let just <laughs> you you can yeah, you can watch yeah. it for yourself. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I, that's that's the thing that I'm most interested in is, is those is those characters because they all look distinctive. Like there's there's the one guy who's some kind of rock star and he's wearing a bunch of bunch of makeup. Yep. <laughs> um. That. There's there's a woman who's like in a library. I think it's a woman. Mm-hmm. There's the guy on the boat. There might have been one more. Yeah. I'm. The apart from that though, the thing that I like most about the episode is the fact that the car chase yes. looks so nice. Yeah. Let, you know that the looks cars. So, the cars are not CG. Yeah, that looks so old fashioned, but it's exactly the reason why it looks so great. I know. I love it. It it just like for the last few years, I have watched too many CG car chase that. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! I'm, I'm just, I just, I just feel wary of them. Yeah. Uh, but this one, you know, this is a nice break from, yeah, from the constant CG, because it wouldn't. I mean, I understand CG being used in anime. It's a cost-cutting measure. It's a time-saving measure. But Lupin is so rooted in, uh, in like, manga and anime history, mm-hmm. that it would feel wrong to to overdo the CG. So they're. At least for now, they're holding out. You know, they're still yep. putting the big bucks into the, the, car chases. Yeah, and I I agree to that decision, man. I'm I'm glad I'm glad that they do that. You know, they do it the old-fashioned way. 
Yeah. All right. So how anything else how to say you about the show? Uh, not much else. Do you want to say okay. anything else? Nope. I don't. Th I mean, there's more I could say, but we have to like limit every show to to ten minutes 10 or minutes, probably less. Yeah. All right. So so to wrap up, uh, what how how you rank about how you rank these shows? I put it fourth. Really? All right. Yeah. I I put it seventh out of nine. Seven? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so we got seven for Lupin. Yeah. I mean, I I liked part four, so mm -hmm. more more Lupin is is good for me. All right. So <laughs> let's let's get to the next shows. Which is it's probably probably Megalobox, right? Yeah, Megalobox. That's right. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a good one. I know. All right, your thoughts? Um. Uh, yeah, I I wasn't much interesting interested to see to watch Megalobox, to check out Megal Meg Megalobox, be before watching these episodes. Because of all, all these cyborg things that just, you know, like, all the design, character design that just, you know, wear me out. <laughs> it weird, weirded you out. Yeah, okay. they, they, they just make no sense to me, so I just completely off. You know, you know what weirds me out? Yeah, what? When people cut the skin off of a corpse so they can find some treasure. Well, it... <laughs> it feels alright to me. It's not wear me out. <laughs> not, not like people with robot arms? <laughs> alright. So uh, I'm, I was completely surprised. I was completely like really hooked when when like uh, when the episodes comes and you know like it, it's overall it's great. I just I, I just love everything about that. It's uh, very stylish. The yeah they have like the the main character that's you know like the underdog that I I I, he's, I, I he's do care literally about. a dog. He's literally underdog. He literally like illegals like underdog. Junk, yes, junk junk dog is his name. Oh yes, <laughs> um, I, uh, they they hint to the uh, to the main story about them like competing in the mega championship, whatever. Megalonia. Megalonia, say, and yeah. I'm 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 very interested to see that as well. So like everything I I, I love everything about this house. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I I even like the fact that the show is clearly not mastered uh, at a high resolution. Like, it's going it's 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 not going for a grainy cell animated look, but it is going for like a low resolution kind of gritty mm -hmm. sort of look. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and I I really appreciate that about it. I don't know why. I mean, it's it, you could even say it's a little pretentious not to not to. <laughs> you know, do the best mastering job on it that you can mm -hmm. and make it the highest resolution that you can just for a visual effect. But, I mean, I'll be damned if it doesn't really, like, sell me on it. Yeah. Because it, it fits. Like, the, the world of the show is, is really high-tech, but it's also very, like, extremely urban to the point of poverty. Mm -hmm. There and, and everything that the show does, like, the, the costuming, the, a lot of people are wearing cheap-looking clothes... Um, there's ga there's gambling everywhere. There's there's a guy who literally says at a dog race, you you'd better win or you're gonna be in the soup pot tonight. Yeah. Like people have to eat dogs. <laughs> that's right. that's how that's how little that's how little money there is if you really think yep. about it, in in like the lower class because there's obviously a nicer part of the city. You can see in some shots, there will be like a bunch of rundown buildings and a and like dirty dusty. Uh, landscape mm -hmm. and then as you get closer to the city everything starts to get spruced up a little bit and look a little nicer yeah that's right so that everything everything that the show does visually and even in in some some bits of dialogue is communicating what kind of world the characters are living in mm -hmm. and that's how that's how it ought to be like it shouldn't just be people standing around explaining things to one another yeah I'm, it should Yep. There should be a story being told on screen. That's right. And that's what Megalobox did. Yep. I, I really appreciate the way that they they not info dumping on uh, all the things to us, like the uh, situation that Chung Doc uh, find himself in, the uh, backstory about Chung Doc as well. They they just you know like keep hinting it, but they not did out say say out loud that, that you know like what his character is about, what he's looking for. Yeah. I, I really like it. 
and uh, the fight, the boxing fight. How do you feel about them? Um, it was the boxing was underwhelming to me. All right. I mean, I I mean I liked it. I would I would say that the boxing. Maybe rather than being underwhelming, I would say it was one of the least crucial parts of the show in my enjoyment of it. Yeah, because it it looks it looks great in motion, mm-hmm. but since he's throwing fights, mm-hmm. that's his that's his job. Yep. Um, we we don't we don't get a lot of like really dynamic back and forth exchanges of blows. It's mostly him defending himself, and then he gets that one nice clean shot in, or he would have if the bell hadn't rung. Mm-hmm. So it, it looks nice, and the music that's playing, you know, it's it's got a good, like, a driving beat to it. So it, it feels good to watch. But it's not really the boxing that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. It's more just the way the show looks and how it feels. So the I, the boxing, I'm, I'm sure I'll like it as the, as the story unfolds. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty of really fun, like, heart-pumping uh, matches. But... Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's going to be the number one thing in in my uh, consumption of the show. Yeah. All right. So um, I just say that uh, I I love it. I like everything about Mega Mega Loop Box. It's just it's just that you know I I don't feel that this show is like especially for me like I I still has some hesitation about that for some reason I just can't tell you why like object objectively. I think everything about this show is great. Subjectively, though, uh, I, I I just can't I, I just can't say that it, it's like my my favorite thing out of like all the shows. Right, I get what you mean. Yeah, I, I mean I wouldn't even say that it's objectively great because there you you can't be objective when you're when you're watching TV, mm-hmm. or when you're watching anime. It's it, you know it's all it's all a matter of taste. Mm-hmm. I know, I know what you mean though. Like it's, it's uh, there seems to have been a lot of thought and care put into it. It seems well made to me. Yep. Low resolution, notwithstanding. Well, so what, it's like, what, to be what, that what is it? So, yeah. yeah. What, what is, yeah. what is it about the, like the cyber, the, not cyber. It's Cyb- oh. you, know, you know, the the yeah. robot arms. The, what is it about that that you can't, uh, that you, that you don't really like? Well, it's supposed to be boxings. So I, I I think uh, when when they do boxing with the me- mechanical arms, it just defeat all the purpose. So that that what that what my feeling coming to the episodes, but they they do explain it very well about about using those for the. Uh, I actually don't re- I don't remember them explaining why they they, they do, were using mechanical arms. Well, they they do explaining about the uh, the new technology that make them that that the whole the whole premise of the uh, of the the big tournament, the mega tournaments. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, because the that woman, we only know her as owner. I think actually, yep. we probably know her last name since she's a part of that big famous family. But I forget. Yeah, I I don't remember her name. either. Uh, yeah, we we know that this tournament is going on, and like I I guess it, you know, it it raises the stakes. Yep. Um, for for audience members. So so see see um, see what to use the uh, tournaments at the advertisement for for using the on the mechanical stuff. Right. Uh, into like in into into everyday life. I think that's that. Yeah, but that's what her message is about. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Using it as advertising for your product, you know, that's what corporations do. Mm-hmm. They they'll do it any way they can. But the thing that I don't understand, like I- even the underground fights, yep, that have nothing to do with her company. Yeah, they do are still that using well. this technology. So I I understand like why it would be more exciting for spectators, but I don't really understand the athletic reason for the change because the, this show isn't really concerned about like the the transition from present day yep. like that you and I live in yep. to this future. It's not interested in that. It's telling a story that is set in the future and it's it's stuck there yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, it's already happened like that. You know, they they don't they don't really explain that. I agree. Yeah, mm. uh, but I, I'm I'm okay with that because I like almost everything about the show. I'd say I'd say I probably like everything. Yeah, right. um, but I am in the middle of Hajime no Ippo right now, though. So mm. just for me, extremely subjectively, yep. this is not this is not the newest or freshest thing mm-hmm. uh, to see in anime. All right, but that's like the only complaint I could possibly have. Mm-hmm. All right, so I I, I would recommend that you will rank yourself at about. First or third, right? Me? Yep. 
So how do you how do you rank these shows? Uh, I put it first. All right. I put it four. Fourth. Okay. Yep. So it's tied with uh, Hina Matsuri then, because they both have an average score of two and a half. Really? Yep. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So. Do you have anything else to say about Bag of the Box? Um. Yeah. There's. Oh. Just very quickly, one thing that I really appreciated about it was yes. in that first fight against the blonde guy, uh -huh. where he's supposed to throw the match, yep. I was sure, I was positive as I was watching, that he was going to disobey orders, and uh. that he was going to punch the guy out, and that he was going to like yell out, I'm, I'm going to compete in, in Megalonia, and I'm, I'm going to get the grand prize, and I'm going to be the number one boxer, yep. because that's a very anime thing to do. So I was so pleased. I was so happy when that did not happen. Yeah. He took the dive, and then it the show kind of takes a turn, and it actually introduces him to Yuri, like the the yep. number one boxer who is being set up as the big rival. Yep. So I'm I was very pleased. Yep. Uh, by that development. It, it's 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 kind of very good storytelling that we 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 see there. Like I I I agree on that point, and I I I I like I like the uh, the storytelling of these shows. It. It's just good. It just it very yeah. solid. It's very anti shonen. Yeah, right. <laughs> which I appreciate. <laughs> what is right. what's next on the list? The next one on the list will be Piano No Mori, Piano Forest. Okay. Right. Uh, now you saw the 2007 movie version of this in preparation. So can you talk a little bit about, like, compare the two, explain what the movie did differently, what the TV show may have missed, All right. etc. Um, the movie that I watched back in two thousand and seven was uh yeah, I think so. yeah was uh, produced by Madhouse, so needless to say, uh the production is much better than the one that we're watching now, and right. uh the story just uh, the story from the movie just follow the part where um, where ba basically they 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 was uh at, as a kid, it's just like very beginning of the story. So uh so I I I think that this uh this series the uh 2018 version will close over on on this in about like uh two or three episodes. Okay. Um so you think it's going to move to the part that wasn't covered by the movie? Yeah yeah they 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 got they're going to move well uh from that because uh from from what from what I got from the manga the uh the part where they was as a kid is is good enough material for for them to run through over twelve episodes, and I, I I think that judging from from the first scenes that we saw that Kai as the adult playing piano, playing in a competition, I think that they they will go over that as well. So they will go over them as a kid and them being an adult. So they're gonna okay. be a lot of you know like chapter manga chapter to to burn over their materials yeah that's that's unfortunate because the i mean the manga run for it ran for like 20 years i think it went on hiatus for a few years yep. in the middle mm -hmm. but it's it started in 1998 or 1999 mm -hmm. and it just recently concluded so it's a it's a super long-running series and i mean it's a trend for for anime to be just 12 episodes like yeah and you're done it's That's really unfortunate. I know for this show specifically, but it's unfor it's unfortunate in general as well. So so I, I just so, yeah so I just want to ask you how you think about this show like as a new pers as an as as the, the new thing you know like like you you just watch right. it like yeah new viewer new viewer yeah. yes right. Um, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I. I, I recognize that it has a, a few issues, mm -hmm. but I, I did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I like series that focus on music. Yep. I like series that feature kids as main characters who actually act like children. Even if even if they do, even if they are like super gifted as both of the the main characters in the show are. Mm -hmm. Like one of them is a is training to be a, a pianist, and the other one is a a, pro, a self taught prodigy who plays a piano in the forest yep. that only works when he touches the keys. Yep. So that I mean, they're they're not actually kids that you would find, you know, if you were to grab one off the street. Yep. Um, but they do they act believably <coughs> like children. You know, they're 
they're obstinate and they're you know they're they're kind of they're innocent and they they form friendships really quickly but also make enemies very quickly yep I just I appreciate that about the series um that's probably the thing that I liked most about it was the the, the depiction of the kids even the even the bully with like the fat lips mm-hmm yep I thought his I I liked his character um I liked his voice I liked his haircut <laughs> uh <laughs> I just I just thought he was one of the better bullies in anime that I've seen in a while because usually they're like in high school and you know they have pompadours and they're they're wearing the their school uniform but it's like you know they've got it unbuttoned or they're all just the same but this one didn't feel that way. Well, so I, I most I mostly like the fact that it's about kids and that it kind mm-hmm. of looks like a kid's show, which mm-hmm. I think is appropriate. Yeah. How about you? Well, so this uh the the tv series actually does a better job at you know at the bullying and stuff more than the the t- uh more than the movie version because i remember like the movie spent like the first 20 minutes just for those you know like the kids bullying around like fighting each other's which is okay. which is way too much uh and uh the well it's like like, like so far I, I i i i like what what we see here i um, one of the main uh change compared to uh from from the TV series compared to the movies is uh the way the teacher remember the um he 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 was like one of the um he was a pianist yeah he yeah. was like an elite Japanese pianist yeah um so and and then he he got he got into the accident and in the movie version he refused to play the the pianos so he he refused to play like not anything at all but in the series we, we see we see like for the first few minutes that he he playing and then Kai uh, kind of like pointed out that he that one his left hand was slower than the other hands yeah so oh, so in the movie he didn't play at all yeah so 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 he, he was he was like experiencing some kind of trauma with the piano so wait but then how was he a music teacher he couldn't play the piano yeah he, he just he's a uh, teaching something else but like uh he, he just doesn't touch the piano at all interesting yeah he he throw out the pianos into the forest and yeah just ba- basically that he he just uh, doesn't have anything to do with by play piano anymore until he see kai playing so that right that's the movie person yeah. of movie persons so I think that the series, uh, like you know, like close over that that detail for the better, because uh, I I I don't I don't feel the need to like spend much time on, on 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 him, you know, like on his ex. So like like so so far I I I like what we see. I like the story. I like all the details that they 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 plan out so far. I don't like the production though. I feel it lackluster. I feel there's the animation kind of stiff I don't like the uh, CG uh, piano playing I, right. I, I I don't like the character design that much like compared huh. to the I, I really I really do yeah. I like I like the fact that they just look like normal kids uh, I like that I, I, I don't like the teacher look though like he, he looks much better in the movies than the, in the t- a TV series okay Um, but like uh, other than that, like I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the show so far. I, 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 I like the story so far. I actually was, I was okay with the CG, piano playing. Mm-hmm. I thought that was all right because it, I mean, its its only purpose was to faithfully portray. The, the piano and the person playing it, how their hands would move, how their fingers would move. That's all it was used for. And I, I didn't, I, I mean, obviously, it, it was something I noticed, and it, it jumped out at me as as being like inappropriate and not really belonging mm-hmm. cg usually does i mean in in 2d animation yeah i i can i can't think of any shows really where it's been totally seamless although i'm sure there have been one or two that yeah. were like really good at it yeah um but i i understand what it was for in this show and i i think it's an acceptable um level i mean the the show's being produced by gainax's offshoot studio and like fukushima yeah um, and it's their first production, so I mean, 
they they're doing what they have to do, I guess. Yeah. I'm I'm okay with it. I I like the the way that the characters, you know, that their that their arms and hands move and their their bodies mm-hmm. as they're playing the piano, like they're really getting into it, feeling the music, and they they kind of you know sway back and forth a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's something that would be really difficult to do in just two D. Yeah, I agree. So I you know it's it's not it's not great, but that's that's where we are in 2018 watching. Yeah. Anime for kids. <laughs> well. <laughs> So, so I do enjoy the shows, but uh, yes, uh, I'm not overly, you know, like uh, really overly optimistic about the shows. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yep. Any final thoughts before we reveal our our numbers? All right, just I just reveal the number. <laughs> How about you? You did? No, no, no. So I will now. If if I don't oh, have okay. anything else to talk about. All right, I I gave it, I put it in third place. Oh, all right. I yeah. I put it a fifth. So okay. like right in the middle. Yep, that means it's gonna end. It's fourth overall. Yep. Um. So there's a there's a decent chance that we'll that we'll cover it. We'll see. We we'll see. Yep. The next one, on the list would be Steingate Zero. Steins Gate. Okay. So. Quickly before we get to Steins Gate, I see that you have revealed your number of one, three, four, and five picks. So I wonder what number two is. I have a guess. Yeah, what do you um, guess? Uh, I'm guessing that it's Steins Gate Zero. Yeah, it is. It is Steins Gate Zero. Okay. Well, that's it's unfortunate for you that you put it in second because uh, I did not put it there. <laughs> well, so so my first and my second is your like seven and you know. Whatever. Seven and whatever. And yeah. lower we'll, ranks. We'll, I'll reveal that at the end. Yep. Yeah. Um, you you recently watched Steins Gate for a project that you're doing where you watch yeah, a whole so bunch I, of 2011 series. And you really liked it. That's, that's right, yep. Yeah. Well, I, I, I watched uh, Steins Gate before, like a few years, few years back, and I was pretty impressed by that. This time, <laughs> for, for the rewatch, I, I feel a little bit underwhelming. You gave it a ninety-one out of a hundred, man. Ninety-three. <laughs> the then how is that underwhelming? That's like that's practically perfect. Well, uh, it's it's like it's not in the it, it, it's just a little bit underwhelming. I uh, I I mean like the the comedy didn't work for me this time compared oh, yeah, to the last I mean, time. I'm surprised it did the first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this show makes me cringe like five times every episode <laughs> all right but but we're here to talk about uh stand gate zero and well science gate zero made me cringe t- 10 times in one really? episode all right so so tell, yeah, tell absolutely absolutely tell me what do you think about the new characters we have two new characters this time uh we do we do <laughs> which i thought there was only one all right so so which is the lonely girl and um and whoever's wife future wife i don't think she's new no she, she's new tell me it's wasn't she in, was she not in the original no she wasn't in the original not, not that I, i'm aware of i i think she appeared but didn't have a major role really i might be wrong all right i just watch it but I, i'm not uh i just reckon i'm not paying that much attention to that i mean you would you would remember better than i do she probably wasn't i just you know, maybe my brain filled her in because I I knew that uh, Daru and and some girl yep. uh, had you know had a baby together and then she chim- she traveled back in time and stuff. Um, okay, so the the new characters. Uh, yep. I think that lolis are a stupid trend and I hate it. I hate yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why they had to put a lolly girl in the movie. It's a sex. It's well. a sexual thing. It's a sexual oh. thing. Huh. I'm not. I'm not saying that like the, that Steins Gate is going to use her for for fan service or anything. But that's just a that's a proclivity that Japanese people have, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's it it exists in all cultures, I'm sure, but it's very out in the open in uh, manga and anime. And I see basically the same age as me. She was born in 1989. Believe that. Well, she's 21. Oh well, well because the uh, the movie is set in 2010. Right. Yeah. So that's why. So she's she's twenty one. Yep. 
That's, uh, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, like, she's, she's that short and she's 21. Anyone who's that short in real life would be a little person, you know? Yeah. Like, like a, you know, a midget to be uh, inappropriate, ah. I guess, not politically correct. Well... They would be a midget. Well, it, yeah, well, in, in Japan, now, you know, you can be but she, tell about the But she's short, for a Japan, she's, yeah, she's short for a Japanese person. That's right. Like it's clear, it's clearly a trope, and it's it's silly. And as for the woman, you know, the the other new character, because I guess she's new. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really feel one way or another about her. She's the girl for Daru, the same way that uh, Mayushi or Mayuri or whatever her name is is the girl for uh, Okabe. All right. She just doesn't have much of a personality to speak of, other than being, you know, like having a having a voice like this and being really gentle and laughing at everything. No. Nah, and she got Lousy. the she got the big boobs as well. Well, they all do in this new in this reboot or whatever I, it is. Well, and it's just like six months have passed. Hi. Yeah, they're from from the original. I mean, yep. The timeline. Oh really? Yeah, only six months. Uh, it it just winter. You know, they 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 mentioned about that that it okay. that is winter time. And summer time was the the event from the uh, original series. Right, because there are always cicadas uh, buzzing in the original, yeah. like nonstop every episode. Well, I I I do agree with you that this episode feel like feel a bit like a recap, feel a bit like you know like they they have to set up on on the on the characters, have to meet all the characters in order for us to catch up again. So I didn't think it was that much of a recap. I thought there was a portion of it that was pretty recappy, but. A lot of time was dedicated to showing how Okabe has changed his life. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so uh, and I, you mean, like I that. think the show did that pretty well. Mm -hmm. All right, I like that as well. I think it's one of the best aspect in this episodes. Yeah, I would agree that that's one of the best aspects of this episode. Uh, but the problem is everything that's surrounding it is just Steins Gate. <laughs> It's, it's just the, anime. It's the, gir the girl, the girl, yeah, pretty much. To yeah. be honest, it's the girl in the cat suit. It's the it's the female character who just exists because she's there and like you know there has to be a girl for every guy, or in the case of this show there have to be like four girls for every guy. It just Science Gate to me is a series that's very clearly adapted from a game or a visual novel, because the mm -hmm. the idea of roots you know different girls having different roots is yep. it's perfectly captured by the the idea that you travel through time. And you send the you know you send the emails yep. in in order to to change each girl's future like it's just it's it's so clearly like a product yep. you know I it's it's I don't like it well <laughs> as you can tell yeah well yeah actually the anime version do a pretty good job did a pretty good job oh um, you mean this e this episode of no Zero? no 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 the uh, the original um, yeah up you know like not not really developing any of those girls, you know, root. Like, they, 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 they cut it dry about enough. So that's why I feel. Well, but they, there are still a bunch of episodes dedicated to, like, Ferris gets an episode with... I I can't remember what her deal was. Like, she was something about going the, to America. The cat girl, the... Yeah, the cat girl. Which one? All right. She's the, she's the cat one. Like, yeah. her, her dad is the... Is the uh, the leader of some company or yep. something and and yeah they there was an he got into accidents and yeah 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 blah 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 yeah so Okabe the, the way he tries to fix her life for, or something is uh, getting her dad back into her life back to dead uh, back from the dead <laughs> yeah well well, well the, okay. no no the, the way the way he, he fixed the problem the way he, he want he want to chin back it to tell her to give up the dad in this in, in the timelines okay so that's that doesn't sound so that right was, to me that was her that, story yeah that doesn't sound right to me but well so there's there's that and uh then you know the the trap character yep they had to have an episode about her like changing her gender somehow using yep. d-mail or it, like i don't know there's to me steins gate is one of the most overrated uh series of this decade all right <laughs> but uh, you know, people are free to enjoy whatever they want. Uh, it's just one of the one of the big popular series from this decade that I like the least. All right. 
Wow, and, good uh, to hear. I, I, anyway, moving away from Steins Gate to this episode, it's true that we got a good sense of how Okabe changes, um, and that's that's good, but I, I I don't know. I just don't care that much about the show, and I don't I don't feel as though this episode offered a whole bunch of new stuff that would attract people yeah. to it or attract someone like me to it who didn't like the original. This is you know this is like a spinoff or a sequel. Well, uh, I, I, and not a particularly different one. I think it's supposed to be a hook, but uh, we we don't really see that hook yet. So uh, the the hook will be the the red hair girl. But uh, I I don't remember her name. What whatever her name is, um, uh, Kurisu. Yeah, come back as a as a kind of cyber. So, and we yeah Amadeus right. Yeah, so so we we don't really see that hook yet. So I. So so the episode just 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 like you know like I think it meant purpose meant purpose just to um just to to show us how 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 Okabe just in in his state right now. Yeah, but All like confusing do you stuff. Do you remember uh, because I mean Suzuha is is posing as Daru's little sister, so she and Okabe are up on the roof at one point, and yep. she tries to get him to go back in time again yep. and save Kurisu to avert World War Three. Yep. Um, and he's he's like trauma, you know, his trauma comes back up. I I can understand that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then but then later his flashback scene, where he like remembers stabbing her, mm-hmm. and. Yep. Uh, and he he's like holding the knife, and then there's there's like a a hundred dead kudisus yep. around him, like all in pools of blood. And then the music gets like real really distorted. It sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks. It gets like really high pitched. Yep. And he's like, huh, huh, huh. Yep. that I actually burst out laughing during that scene. Really? <laughs> yes. It was it was so ham fisted, and not at all an appropriate way to uh, depict somebody who's who's got like ptsd yep you should just have him him very quietly you know suffering rather rather than you know hallucinating a whole bunch of stuff and yep i see your point (laughs) all right i'm laughing about it even now just remembering it (laughs) all right uh tell me how how you how you write this out all right, I put it last. I have no interest in talking about this show or watching it, mm. so I put it dead last. <laughs> I put it as second. I know. <laughs> so that means it gets an average score of five and a half. Yep. All right. Hopefully that'll be hopefully that'll be low enough that we don't have to talk about it because <laughs> I would be an unwilling participant. <laughs> All right. The next house would be Tadakun Wakoi Washina. Yes. Tad Tadakun uh, doesn't fall in love. Yeah, right. Um, Tadakun, not only does he not fall in love, he doesn't fall in anything or do anything or have a personality. That's exactly what I failed. <laughs> it's, it's, it, the show is bad. <laughs> it, even even when I watched the uh, second episode just then, he he just like a plant character who doesn't do anything, who, who, who just, you know, just there. Yeah, he is just there. And I think the idea is that I mean, the show is called Tadakun Doesn't Fall in Love, so he's supposed to be kind of like a stoic, uh, unexpressive character. And this girl, Teresa, is going to like open up his heart. You know, that's that's the idea. She'll she'll make him learn to feel and learn to love. But in order for that to be effective, there has to be something that you like about him to begin with. That's and for me, there's just nothing. That's right. Well, I I, I do enjoy Teresa as a character. I do. In- I mean, she's she's cute. Man, see, I I, I do enjoy a, a a little, you know, like, uh, the the joke about the uh, rainbow shogun, which is I right. I think like one of the best, you know, the best joke that I I have seen in a while. In like in anime? No, no, in this uh spring seasons. Okay. And yeah. what else? Um. I, I like I like some of the uh, visual storytelling, like like the way that okay. the way that you know like when whenever he taking pictures, she just appears. <laughs> is that visual storytelling? It's it, it, or is that or is that coincidence? No 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 it it's it's oh uh, how 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 to be it's it's not it's not a visual storytelling it's the uh, visual um, 
Uh, yeah, gag. There's like a piece a of gag. Okay. Yes, right. I, okay, I like that. Yes, I, I actually like that you put it that way because I just viewed it as a silly coincidence, like the show pushing their characters together because they have to start going to the same school and then they're gonna have to fall in love and then there's gonna be a rom com and all that. But yeah, I, I guess it is kind of a kind of a gag. Um, it's not one that I found very funny though, because mm. <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't laugh at all while I was watching this. Mm. Um, the the Rainbow Shogun thing that was that was kind of I like the idea of it more than I like the actual joke on screen. Yeah, well, because it's a good it's a good way of showing that she's like a Japanophile, that she's really interested in Japanese culture and stuff. Yep, that's right. And that she's kind of she's a bit of a like an airhead. Yeah. It's good that if if they do it one time, I feel that they're gonna be uh, repeating that joke every single episode, every single what time. the rain rainbow shogun the thing? rainbow shogun things yes. No, do you really? Oh, uh, they they do repeat that a bit on the second episode yes. Oh oh boy, well I hope they I hope they don't go you know thirteen for thirteen or however many episodes <laughs> they're gonna be. Yeah I. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't real. He, uh, I'm, Tata. Tata is like a wet noodle. He just. There's just nothing there. He's like a. He's like Anakin from, from the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, how do you feel about ahead. the supporting cast? Um, the Tata's best friend is really annoying. Yeah. Well, Hate him. Uh. <laughs> he's like he. He's just under the impression that he's a big ladies' man. And he is very uh, flamboyant and doesn't understand social cues. Uh, I, there are characters in anime like this. They pop up from time to time. And I think they're supposed to mock the the idea of somebody who, who considers themselves really popular mm. or, or something. As though like popularity is something to be derided. Yep. So they make fun of the concept with a character like this. You're That's missing the mark completely. Like... I don't know. I just don't find any comedic value in his character. And the the girl was was okay. I was fine with her. Mm. Teresa's uh, attendant or whatever she is. Alice. Okay. Is that her name? Okay. Yeah, that's her name. Um, I actually watched the second episodes and he's not that annoying anymore. But there there are oh. a bunch of whole more annoying characters popping up. I guess they're they're classmates since they're in school now. Yeah, she's a ca- yeah classmates. So they but basically in this I, I I don't think you're gonna watch the second episode, right? So I just gonna spoil you anyway. Yeah, spoil me. <laughs> because uh in the second episode they're gonna join uh, Teresa and Alice to be exact. They're gonna join the photography club. Of course is, they have to be at an after school club. Yeah. Of course they do. And and, and they, they join in the photography club, which is where Tada Kun and the the gang hanging out. And, and we got like the uh, club president who basically just uh, scream, screaming, shouting about how he wanted to take a picture of the nude. Oh, wow. That's, front... that's hilarious, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's very hilarious, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, but, 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 but then later on, like, oh, oh, we're here just talking about the first episode. So, yes, I just stop now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, what? Okay. She's a princess or something, right? Supposedly. I I hope the show uh, troll us on that note. Uh, you hope that the show trolled us on yeah. that. Yeah. Just, just. I mean, I. Yep. Tell me. They very clearly didn't. I mean, the her her friend her Alice. Yeah. Uh, says something to her in the first episode about like, oh no, you shouldn't you shouldn't be out here. This isn't befitting of someone of your. Top of life. Yeah, position. Yeah. Um, so she's some kind of royalty. You know, she's got the blonde hair, so it's probably from some it, European country. Oh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. That's what they say. Oh, that's right. Luxembourg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's like, that's the thing that I don't like about, you know, like anime portraying um, European... Foreigners? Foreigner, European character, uh, European characters in the uh, small countries. So in a European small countries, I remember like of a few years back there, uh, there was some show about a princess from a very small countries, and of course because up up there in the small country they have to be like some kind of royalty. I don't know. I don't know why they, the uh, anime put put them that way. Um, 
I think the idea it's just a fantasy like you know date it's the it's the Kate Middleton fantasy of falling in love with a with a prince and <sighs> marrying into royalty but sw- swap the genders in this case oh my god all right so I, I mean when, I, when you I think be, about it a whole yeah. a whole bunch of it's not just anime that I mean, yeah, I, I understand what you mean about anime being pretty, uh, like, butterfingered La- with, when it when it yep. handles uh, foreigners. Yep. I guess from your Euro- European countries in particular. Um, yep. Actually, from all countries probably, and all races. Uh-huh. Um, yep. But I th- I think that it's not just anime that has this this uh, I could this trend uh, of. Yep. Well, this this trend of like you know fulfilling fulfilling fantasies. Mm-hmm. You know, the she's she's a princess, so he's gonna fall in love with the princess. I mean, how many times have you seen something like that in a film or or a book? Or that's right. It it happens all the time. Uh, that doesn't mean the show is good though, because I don't think it is. Well, I gotta follow that. <laughs> I don't know why okay. I, I I will stick with that. But um, uh, how 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 would you rank this house? Uh, I put it eighth. I put it ninth. Okay, well. By process of elimination, we know what the other person scored uh, our last show. All right. Which is what? Which is... Wutaku ni koi wa musu kashi. Shot for Wutakoi. Right. Um, so we, we rank this show pretty similarly. Mm. Uh, I put it fifth. Not the same, though. No. I put it six. Yes. So... It's tied with uh, with Steins Gate at five and a half. All right. If if I have, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to see. We'll we'll figure out what the four shows are after. Yep. After this. But what did what did you uh, what did you think of Wotakoi? It's not that realistic. From what I. Uh, from that's for sure. From what I experienced, <laughs> I, I I expect it to be more of like realistic. Look of the people who like you know like who are o- otaku but uh it turned out it's not that realistic it speaking of wish fulfillment yep this this show was the one that i was thinking of when we when we started the podcast by saying that's like a trend yeah in the uh in this in this season i had wotaku in mind when i said that because yeah it's it's about a romance between uh a guy who's obsessed with games and a girl who's obsessed with uh, anime. Yep. And they're they're both like gorgeous, and they're both childhood friends, and they happen to reunite coincidentally at their new job That's... when they're both in their like uh, sexual prime. They're both like in their yeah you know early twenties or something. Yeah. It's yeah, of course it's completely unrealistic. That that doesn't mean that the show can't be good. Um, and there are there are aspects of the show that I like. Yep. But. Uh, I I wouldn't say that it really transcends its rom com genre. Yeah, I, I I do agree with you completely. Um, then there are some aspects that I that I like. I like the um, I like the natural chemistry between them, not not the uh, not the romantic that come at the end. Right. I I but you like you like their dynamic as as friends or just as human beings at, together as. F- w- w- <laughs> as friends, I I I don't as really I, lo- I don't really dif- differentiate between the two friends and okay. human being. Well, right. Well, the reason I said that is is because like maybe it's not exactly their friendship that you enjoy. Maybe you just enjoy the way that they, they that they talk to one another. All right. So I I li- you know, may- I, maybe I'm like, leaning for the latter. If, yes. Maybe if two characters who weren't friends were to talk this way, you would still really enjoy it. Yeah. So I, I yes. <laughs> okay. I would yeah. be But it, yeah, I, I know what you. I know what you mean. Mm. It's it's like the same thing. You like how they interact as friends. I do too. Um, because they're they're both you know they're both quippy and they're they're sarcastic. They they kind of trade, you know, fun insults yep. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's I think that's that part is pretty realistic. You know, it's yep. to be it's to be expected, especially of people who are like working professionals who also have these these silly hobbies. Mm-hmm. Um, they would that they have a bit of a sense of humor and even like a sense of shame about it. Yep. In the in the, the girl's part, I'd like the lead girl. See, see, guy up, you know, like 
dynamic, see kind of uh, like see open. Yes, I, I, she is I, open. I, I, I just yes, I just I just like the way she act. She she not like some some you know like some uh, uh, typical otaku that we 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 see uh, portray in the uh, in in other mediums, in anime medium as well. Um, I, well, I, I don't know. I think she is a typical otaku, yes. but she just she just looks really good. <laughs> don't you think she's she's kind of yes, like she, she, she gets on the, she runs onto the train in the morning and and she sees the little advertisement hanging from the from the top of the train about some some anime or, or something. Yep. And she's like, oh, this character is so cute as always. That's a very typical like otaku type thing. That's right. Hmm. So I think she is. I think she is, kind of, kind of typical. I think what's well, interesting I, about her. Well, what, what I think about typical, I think more more about like the girls from uh, Princess Jellyfish. Okay. So wait, but you're just being. Aren't you being kind of shallow and just thinking uh, yeah. about the way they look right now? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just thinking because of the way they look. I, I'm just. I'm, I'm more about the way they think of themselves. So like. Uh, okay. The, the otakus in um, in Princess Jellyfish, they're really aware of that, so they're really afraid to to open with like other normal human being, quote right. quote unquote. But um, for her, for for this girl, she kind of the opposite. She kind of you know like hanging around with every with everyone, want to be friend with everyone. But yeah, hide, she also hide, wants to hide hide but yeah. hide her otaku fact. Her, her, Right. The fact that she's an otaku, so yeah. Yeah, that was that was my favorite part of this episode was her like covertly trying to get her boss to reveal that she's an otaku yep, yep. without revealing it herself. Yep, yep, yep. I'm I'm most interested in their relationship, the two women. Um huh. because they're I, I don't know, I, I like the fact that they're they have a similar interest, but they're both mature adults and uh, I especially like how the dynamic is, uh, you know, shifted a bit or maybe complicated a bit by the fact that one is the other's boss. Yep. And I, I think that their relationship might be a good way for um, for both of the them main to come girls. Uh, kind of, yeah. For for Narumi in particular, she's the main Narumi, girl. Yep. For her, for her to accept that part of herself and also accept other people because but, she makes comments to Hirotaka well, about like. Oh no, otaku are gross. I hate them. You but but, so I, but you know what? It it it's not be, uh it's not ne- necessary that she hiding the fact that she are otaku because she she was open she was open before. Like like before coming to this company she was o- open before that she was an otaku in the old company, right? I don't think no, that's not true. It like her shameful secret was revealed and that's why she had to leave her job. Oh, it's not right. as though she was open about it and she got yep, yep. fired. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. All right, yep. So so she she is not okay with her her Be, being you know, that part of herself. Yep. Yeah, and she's also not okay when other people are. Yep. But now that she has this friend, uh, I think that we might see I mean I hope we see a transformation in her character. And I'm more interested in that than the romance because the way that they got together, I was just like, eh, whatever. I don't I don't care. Well I actually uh the the guy lies. <laughs> the guy, you know, like the hook hook up lies. I, I actually lied the bits that he said before until until then the last lie that, you know, like they gonna uh he he gonna be available for Comic cat, for, like to run her booth it, or her table. Yeah, Comic cat. it just it just completely turned me off. Just that line in particular. That line in particular, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I can understand how that one in particular would. I mean, that kind of sucks the any romantic spark out of it. Yeah. Because because that that bit in particular is what convinces her. Like it's a very comical acceptance. Yeah, that's right. That's from right. her when when she hears that she's like, okay, well now I'm in. And then the all the stuff end. you said about never. Yeah, they shake hands. All the stuff that he says about like always treating you well and never making you cry and all that stuff. Uh, she's she's not really moved by any of that. I'm well, she kind of is. The the yep. show cuts to a, a like a sparkly close up on her face, yep. but then, <laughs> but then it undercuts that you know real quick yeah. with the joke. Yeah. Oh. Uh, um, how how do you think about the workplace? I I mean like I th- I I would assume that this show will be featured most in a workplace environment right 
How do you think about that? Uh, I think it'll be split between work and uh, like I, I'm nice. sure that it'll it'll do no. I mean, in terms of location, um, I think oh. it'll be split between work and um, like outside bars and comic restaurants. Like it. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be a comic head episode. Yeah, where he actually does go because this series is very clearly targeting people who are into this sort of stuff. Yeah, not rom coms, but I mean, you know, like games. Yeah, anime manga. I, I I think it's it's more you know like well suited to Ident than like me and you. I'm 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 not consider myself as an otaku, so you know like I'm not really that connected to you know like all the activities that they gonna do in the futures. Yeah, I I agree. I don't really I don't consider myself to be an otaku or as the as the kids say these days a weeb. A weeb. You know. <laughs> yeah. I've I've been to anime conventions, but I was always kind of taken along, uh, and I was never that enthusiastic about going because they're expensive. Well, I they are really expensive. Well, tell me about that. I had to drive three hours to get to the uh, to the closest anime conventions, but I still co- don't consider myself as an otaku. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I I mean we. I I get what you mean, but like. You you are committed to watching the first episode of literally every show every season, and Whoa. vlogging about it. <laughs> that's that's pretty. You're in pretty deep, uh, but but I understand that you have other interests like you're interested in film and and music and. That's right. Uh, it's, it's not just it's not anime being like an all consuming thing, mm. and it might this show might appeal more to people who are who give their lives over to that completely. Yeah. All right. So you. I uh, read the show at fifth overnight, right? I got yes, that at six. Yes. Mm. Indeed. Okay. Uh, should we? I'll go ahead and average all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. This is gonna take me a second. So I'll I'll just read them out loud as I'm doing it, so there won't be any like dead air. Yep. Uh, Frank's. I rated it six. You rated it eight. So Frank's comes eight. in at seventh. Seven. Sorry. Yep. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, Golden on. Kamui, you put it. Golden you Kamui, you know, no, 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 I said go on. Oh, okay. Golden Kamui, you put um, first, first, and I put seventh, so that's an average of four. Four. Oh God, we're gonna have to watch this, aren't we? We're gonna have to uh, watch Hina- it. Yes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, there's still Hisone. There's still Hisone to Misotan. All right. Yep. Um, Hina Matsuri, I put it second. You put it third. Third. So the two and a half. So an average of two and a half. Uh, Lupin, you put it seventh, and I put it fourth. That's an average of five and a half. Five and a half. Um, Megalobox, you put it fourth. I put it first. So that's an average of yes. two and a half. Two and a half. So two so in. Uh, Piano no Mori, you put it fifth. I put it third. That's an average of four. Yep. So tied with Golden Kamui. Mm. Uh, Steins Gate, you put it second, I put it last at ninth. Yep. So that's an average of five, five and a half. Five and a half. Tadakun, you put it ninth, I put it eighth. That's an average of eight and a half. So that's the last Solidly in last place. Yep. And Wotakoi, um, fifth and sixth. Five and a half. For an average of five and a half. So, so that means that, that right now, the four shows that we're going to pick up are yep. tied for first place, Hina Matsuri and Megalobox. Yep. And then tied for I guess like you know third and fourth place. Uh, um, Piano no Golden Mori Kamui. and Golden Kamui. Yeah, yes. But Hisone Tomisotan will, I I pray will influence things. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's I'm, gonna be one of. Go ahead. I'm not gonna give up on Golden Kamui, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. It shows <laughs> severely like it it can't succeed just based on its cool. It's cool premise. That can't be all there is. <laughs> I, I I will be there to say to say you every time, to tell you every time, to remind you every time that it's okay. It's it will. <laughs> no. I mean, I understand that a lot of anime is like really dumb after one episode, and and you you just don't want to watch it anymore because you know it's just some piece of crap video game adaptation or some some uh, you know CG. D C T whatever the acronym is about an after school club you don't want to watch that so when Golden Cowboy comes along you're like oh yes this is this is set in the early twentieth century 
it's in the aftermath of the Russo-Japanese War. There's going to be a treasure hunt, and there's going to be they're going to be in the wilderness. It sounds so exciting, but the the show looks bl- it looks drab. I don't like the characters, <laughs> and I mean those are my two main complaints, pretty much. All right, thanks for the recap. <laughs> <laughs> We're already here about that, you know. <laughs> you're, you're, All yeah, right, you're right. Ho- hopefully, um, like he should name no Mashatan, which is look at the uh, how to turn the Reagan anime version. Will available like later today or like early tomorrow, but a- anyway, like next week we're gonna tell you like if it's gonna make the cut. Right. And, and which of those two shows, Golden Kamui or Piano no Mori, gets axed? Get out. Yep. Right. Might have to flip a coin because I'm. Uh, well, I mean, we'll have an opportunity to watch the second episode, so that that could also influence our our decision. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's, so before right. we go, before we go, like drawing any lines in the sand, we should probably watch some second episodes. Some have already come out, but uh, some haven't. Mm-hmm. Any? Uh, oh, do you want to discuss yeah. any other shows? Like real? Uh, sorry, what was your mm, question? Not, no, 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 not, not really, not really. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't either. I don't think. I wasn't really uh, too excited about anything else. Oh, and I haven't guys, seen much else. Yeah, guys, uh, if if you want to watch another show, another good show this season, go on, check out the uh, Legion of uh, Galactic Heroes, the new ver- Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Yeah, the new versions. Yeah. It's it's alright. It's 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 good. Um, yeah, isn't it one of your favorites of the of the season so far? It's one of my favorite of the season so far. The second one, I I feel a bit dry those. But um, it it's still pretty much very good. Or uh, you can just go ahead, you guys, if you want to check out that show, just just go ahead and watch the original. It's just a uh, hundred and ten episodes, not, not <laughs> of a deal. <laughs> yeah, no, no big thing. No big things. It just you know yeah. like a few days. I uh, the the reason that we didn't that we didn't uh for anyone listening, the reason that we didn't discuss that one is because I'm refusing to watch it. Not because I'm a big fan of the original and I don't like the character designs or anything. Uh, it's because I haven't seen the original, and I, I want to watch it check without. Out. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't ahead. want, to, I don't want to be comparing them. You know, I just want to experience the original as it was. Yeah. So that's that's, that's my fault. That's choice. on that's on me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I from what I understand, people's initial reactions are pretty positive. So I'm I'm sure I'm missing out a little bit, but. Uh, you know, that's my. That's not that's much of a deal. That. Yeah, it's just one show. All right. Thanks very much for listening, guys. You have yeah thanks. any other thoughts, any other things you want to wrap? Up? Oh, just I I just briefly say through about this season how I feel about this season so far. Okay, go for it. It's not really that, uh, that great of a season for me. It's it have like a huge number of uh anime uh, coming out so uh, it was like 30 to 40 new shows coming out huge yeah I think it was like over 40 yeah but spring but, is always the biggest season I think yeah but overall like the the good one were, were, were pretty good good as expected and the bad one was pretty bad as expected there, there's like no middle crowd so well, a, a lot uh, of the shows you, that we uh, didn't talk about are sequels to like some of the biggest anime series of the decade, like Sword Art Online yeah. and uh, um, what else? Uh, Food Wars, then yes, Tokyo Ghoul. Well, we we talked about yeah. Signscape, but yeah, that's another big sequel. There are a ton of sequels, even to stuff that nobody watched, like Fu- uh, uh, Fupen- Hozuki no Retatsu yeah. or Full Metal uh, Panic. Amanchu. Amanchu, yes. Yeah, right. Full Full Metal Panic. I uh, I couldn't finish Full Metal Panic when I saw it the first time. It was. It was too dumb, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think appreciating Full Metal Panic might be like a time and place kind of thing. Like you have to be an anime fan in the two thousands. Yeah. To to really appreciate that. Love it. Yep. Yeah. And that's I I mean I was an anime fan in the two thousands, but not like I am now. Now I'm yeah. much more serious and cultured. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, so my advice should be you know like oh the show that's we covering. Well, that we we just talk about that that oh, that okay, so that you you can you can check them out, uh, or you just follow the uh, sequels. The rest of them just you know like, watch it or leave it. All yeah. right. I've uh, I've got here. nothing else to add. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> well, then we'll sign off. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll be we'll be back with uh, spring coverage of the four shows we mentioned. Unless uh, you know the new Bone show is great, then we'll we'll phase one out. We're gonna do some Rose of Versailles next time as well. Excited to can continue with that one. And uh, that's that's about it. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.